Bingo, 12 o'clock rock. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Think Tech. Today we're doing our Thursday noon show, Aloha, United We Stand. And today we're featuring the Salvation Army. And our guest is Major John Chamnus. He's a divisional leader of the Salvation Army Hawaiian and Pacific Islands Division. And he's been here before. Hey, Welcome Jay. to the show, John. Thanks, Jay. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me on. Great to see you. I'm, I look forward to this discussion. So let's look at the problem first that the Salvation Army addresses here in Hawaii, especially here in Hawaii. Um, and that is, uh, per our discussion before the show, first you look at, I guess, the, the most visible expression of it, and that is homelessness, because we see them all day long. And, and you know, what, five years ago or 10, we were shocked by that. Now it's part, it's the new normal. It's part of the landscape and part of the scenery. We're getting used to it. It's bad to get used to this. But per our discussion just before the show, um, you know, you <coughs> explained to me, and I think it's really a critical point, is that the, the fundamental problem is poverty. Yeah. Poverty leads to all these things, and they, in turn, bring with them homelessness. Talk right. about it, will you? Yeah, you know, I th often I think we think that homelessness is, is the issue, and it's certainly an issue. Uh, but poverty is really the root issue of a lot of these different uh, systemic um, problems that we face, not only here in Hawaii, but you go to the mainland and you see a lot of the same issues. And po poverty leads to poor results in schools. So when mom and dad live in poverty, uh, kids often don't perform as well as kids who grew up in a lower income or middle income or higher income uh, household. Um, Poverty, you know, often leads to to other issues such as uh, addictions, and that's something that the Salvation Army here in Hawaii uh, deals with acutely. We we treat, you know, 22 to 2700 men and women every year through one of our three drug and alcohol treatment programs. And, and again, we're just really treating the uh, not the root cause of, of addiction, right. but really just the result of addiction. Right. But we've got to do that. Oh, absolutely. We, we, we can't solve the, you know, the root cause without a really special effort. We talk about that later in the show. Yeah. But for the moment, the Salvation Army and many other 240 or 50 other charitable organizations funded by Aloha United Way are addressing the people on the street. Yeah, so we're, we're doing it in a number, number of different ways. Um, the $5 million grant that was given by the state to Aloha United Way, I think has been really helpful in, in um, getting uh, people into housing. Um, I forget the number right now, but there's several thousand that have been housed through that uh, grant by the state. And we need to see more of those types of things. But one of the, one of the more difficult parts of this, Jay, is that there's just not a lot, uh, there's not enough affordable housing here in our state. There's just not enough apartments that are really affordable to those that live, you know, in, in the lower income uh, For this regions. discussion, help me understand what is affordable housing? What, how do you see it? What is the best model? You know, if I, were, if I were going to give you affordable, all the affordable housing you wanted, I'd like to be able to do that. Mm. <laughs> what would it look like? What, what kind of housing are we talking about? You know, I think it's a variety of housing. You know, it's it's looking at what they're doing over at Mayor Wright's, and they're going to be regentrifying that area. Fortunately, they're going to keep um, the same number of low-income units within that housing units, but they're also going to build uh, moderate income to middle income to workforce housing. And I think we need to look more at that. I, I would hate for us just to do low-income housing all by itself in isolation. It's I think, a project problem. Yeah, I, I think, you know, that's the, the issues of the 70s that we're now dealing with today. And so I'd rather see... Uh, multiple uh, economic um, ranges living in the same type of housing. I think that's a much more healthy approach, and I think studies would, would demonstrate that that's a better way to look at this issue. The, 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 the fact is that we just do not, we're about 16,000 units short of housing just here on Oahu right now. That's and huge it, when you start it, counting them if, up. If you build any housing, whether it be middle income, upper income, or low income, any housing right now is going to help the, the deficit in the housing market across our state. Uh, it's something that we just have to do. If we really want to deal with this issue of homelessness, if we really want to deal with this issue of, of um, poverty, uh, we've, we've got to build more housing, period. And certainly some of that needs to be uh, affordable for those that live uh, in that, that lower percentile. Yeah. And, um, uh, so I talk, you're talking about all kinds of business models, all kinds of ownership arrangements. Yeah. But somebody who doesn't have a lot of money, or maybe even no money, <laughs> Uh, we'll be able to get housing. Yeah. yeah, of some sort. I mean, otherwise we have people living on the street. And, and that's just not, uh, that's not, 
we should not, we, this is America, <laughs> and we shouldn't have people living on the street. We're supposed to have big hearts, aren't yeah. we? Yeah, and well, I think we do have big hearts, but I, I think we just have to really come together on this issue and un understand this is a crisis in our community. Uh, Hawaii News Now, Star Bulletin, I think have done a great job of profiling this issue for the past couple of years. And they've really pushed this to the forefront uh, in our community to help us to really get our hands around this. Um, but then I think the next step is for us to, to really figure out an effective way to deal with this uh, that, that uh, um, really maintains the dignity of the individual. I mean, the Salvation Army is down there on the streets of Chinatown and Kaka'ako on a regular basis. These are our friends that we go to uh, on a regular basis, and we provide a peanut butter sandwich just to develop a conversation and to get to know people. And, and that's kind of the, the entry point for us to hopefully finding a way that we can get that person from that really basic step of living on the streets to maybe into some corner, sort of a shelter or into a treatment program, just that next step before they go further. So how does it work? That. I'm really curious. This, yeah. this moment here at Christmas, um, you're down there. Uh, you're in uniform. Uh, you have a bag of peanut butter sandwiches, and you see somebody on the street who is clearly a, a candidate for assistance of some kind. Um, so you approach that person. What's the conversation like? You know, often it's just getting to know them. That's the, the, one of the things that people need to understand is that you have to build a relationship with yeah. anybody. And so a lot of what we do is just building relationships with people on the street so they trust us that when we refer them someplace that we're, we're really thinking of their best good. And for a lot of these people living on the street, it's very difficult. And it's very difficult to get from where they're at to where they want to be or where they need to be. Uh, for instance, uh, there was a lady down in Waikiki, and um, she wanted to get into one of our drug and alcohol treatment programs. But before she could do that, she had to go get a couple of prescriptions because when you're dealing with an addict and they're going through... Um, uh, detox. They need support drugs. They, they need some support drugs to help them with that. Yeah. It took all day for somebody to drive her from to several different places, finally in it, ending up at Queens where she had to wait four or five hours oh. in the waiting room before she could get that final prescription, so then no to go up to her. That. It, so it's very difficult. And all along the way, her comment was, I just want to give up. I just want to go back. This is too hard. It's easier for me to be on the street. And so sh people really need a friend to come alongside them to walk them through each one of these steps. And that's what we, as well as other great organizations, try to do in, in working with uh, this population of people. No question you're committed. We, you know, we have talked to you in the past two years a number of times, and uh, I, I can tell you that I'm very impressed with the Salvation Army. Always have been. And with the work you do, the organization you build, the volunteers you achieve. Um, so it's, it's really remarkable. And I think you're a class A uh, organization. But, <clears throat> The question is, with Hawaii News Now and the other media, and the message is that we're in a crisis, and, you know, if you didn't know it, we're in a crisis, K, okay? a crisis, uh, which is going to affect us all. Crises, by definition, affect us all. Uh, <clears throat> how do you, you know, and, and, and so people, therefore, should be educated about the seriousness of the situation, about what's happening on the street, about the need to take action. What should they do? We know what you do, but yeah. what should they do? Uh, I think the common person, I think one of the things that they can do is certainly support uh, nonprofits around the state that are really making a difference. That, that's one thing. I think another area is to, to get educated themselves about the challenges of homelessness and poverty and addictions. Uh, thirdly, I think is to encourage their um, representatives, uh, their elected officials, that um, something more has to be done than what's currently be done, being done. I, I think the governor and the mayor have done have made great strides, and um, I think they have certainly are heading in the right direction, but there, there's lots more to do. And it's, it's, it's a complicated issue, it's a challenging issue, it's going to take a lot of resources to deal with this. Uh, but at some point, this isn't going to go away. Uh, Hasn't yet. In fact, it's gotten worse. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not going to go away. Um, so I, I think it's really um, sitting down and saying, okay, what, what how, how can we really address this as, as, a, as a community? So I, I really think that it's government, it's nonprofit, it's for-profit, it's our community coming together and say, we want to solve this issue. Here's the steps we need to take to do so, and let's get going on it. And um, it might mean that we have to put some things aside right now and really focus on this one issue to resolve Priorities. this. At the end of the day, Jay, we're always going to have the homeless, we're always going to have poverty, but I think we can take a substantial bite out of this if we are to 
to really address the housing issue and the poverty issue, um, to begin, you know, nicking away at this. We've got to fight this at both ends. We have to fight it on the end of homelessness, but we also have to look on the other side and look at our educational system and, and our poverty system and say, what can we do at the front end of this to hopefully avoid families uh, falling further into poverty, at the same time dealing with those that are experiencing homelessness uh, to extreme extent and, and helping them to get off the streets. Yeah, a good point on both sides. Yeah. <clears throat> and in order to, um, you know, <clears throat> it's not so much that um, we are going to stamp it out because, as you say, it'll yeah. always be it's part of it's part of the American democracy, actually, and the American economy. But <clears throat> it's t to me, and you can comment on this. It's it's holding the line anyway. It's so it doesn't get worse and worse. Uh, we we want to contain the problem. We want to um, limit uh, you know the the increase in these unhappy times uh, by at least um, ameliorating. Uh, what what we have, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm not sure how to. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. my my point only is that we're not going to stamp it out, no. and so we should address making sure it doesn't get worse. Well, and I think that's a little bit what we try to do um, during the Christmas season. The Salvation Army, for the past 121 years, has tried to make Christmas a little brighter for those who are down and out. So that's our, our Angel Tree program and yeah. the great sponsors that we have like Central Pacific Bank and Burger King Hawaii to make sure that you know those kids who are struggling at this time of year, the families that are struggling, get presents. And last year alone, we provided 72,000 toys to kids and I, I should also say seniors across our state to ensure that on Christmas morning, uh, those that are in need have a Christmas, a brand new Christmas present under that tree. That's what you've been doing for what, 150 years or more? 121 years 120. here in Hawaii, 150 years worldwide. It's little things like that that, you know, they, they might seem inconsequential, but the thing that I love about Angel Tree is that we put these trees in our malls at our Central Pacific Bank branches, and an individual can go in and they can pull a tag, one of these tags off a tree, and say, I'm going to go get a toy for a seven-year-old girl who wants just something uh, simple for Christmas. Oh, like, each one of them has a... Has a yeah, so this is an actual boy or an actual girl oh. who gives their name <laughs> and a suggested gift. Four-year-old boy wants beach toys. It's and, lovely. And what a more practical way for our community to get involved and yeah. make sure that that kid has a new toy under the tree yeah. at Christmas. Yeah. Uh, but you know what I hear uh, at our Christmas kettles is people will come up to me and say, you know, 30 or 40 years ago, my family was down on their luck, and parents didn't have any money to buy Christmas gifts, but we got a gift from the Salvation Army that year, and that really made People a difference. People never forget. They, they don't. They don't. Yeah. And um, So we, we have the, the kettles. Yep. We have the uh, angel trees. Yep. Uh, tell me about some of the, your other programs uh, that are either focused on this season or otherwise. Uh, the kettles and the angel tree are the primary uh, uh, focus uh, of our efforts this time of year. Certainly raising the money through our kettles is vitally important. The, that funding goes towards, uh, first of all, it stays right in the community in which it's raised. So if you're in Kona and you're putting money in that bucket in Kona, it stays That's in Kona. That's good. good to know. And um, it, it, uh, we have um, homeless feeding programs across the state. So, you know, you go to that soup kitchen, you're going you're to get a hot meal. You go to our adult daycare program uh, over on uh, Vineyard, and a great place for families to put their adult uh, individual who needs that extra care during the day. It's uh, providing a, a week of summer camp to a kid who otherwise could not attend camp. So it goes to provide lots of different services across our state, not just at Christmas, but, but year-round. So that kettle money is absolutely vital. Uh, so when you see a kettle, Put some change yeah, in there. Yeah, reasonable request. Yeah. I mean, we've been doing it for 150 years. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, and a lot of people don't realize, a lot of people come up and they'll put some change in the kettle and they'll say, oh, I'm sorry, I could only give, you know, a couple of quarters or whatever. But one third of our kettle income comes from coin alone. So that coin, wh what we like to say is uh, the change you put in provides change coming, coming out, out. Of, of that kettle. The yeah. change and transform lives from those that are going through one of our drug and alcohol treatment programs to a summer camp to an after school program for a kid. Uh, so that's your big method of fundraising? That's it, the kettles? It, it, it's, I think it's, it's one of most, our most visible, uh, uh, we, we do many other sorts of fundraising efforts, but certainly it's the most visible that the Salvation Army has. We're gonna take a short break, Major John Chamnus of the Salvation Army. Uh, we're gonna be right back and we'll hear more about their programs and their successes. I wanna do metrics with you, John. 
All we'll right. be right back. Thanks. Hi, I'm Ethan Allen, host of Likeable Science on Think Tech Hawaii. I hope you'll join me every Friday at 2 p.m. to discover what is likeable about science. We bring on scientists of all ilk, astronomers, physicists, chemists, biologists, ecologists, and they talk about their work, and more importantly, they talk about why you should talk about their work, why you should think about their work, why you should like their work. I help them bring out why their work is understandable, why it's meaningful, why people should care about it, why people should support science. We have a good time. We talk about current uh, events of interest. We talk about uh, historical events sometimes. We dig deep into their research, why they do, what the joys and delights and frustrations of their work are. And in all, we, we show a, a real world of science, a real world of likable science. I hope you'll join us every Friday at 2 p.m. We're back. We're live. We're here with John Chamnus, Major of the Salvation Army for the Hawaii and uh, Pacific region. And uh, at this point in time, I think we ought to do some pictures, a little slideshow, see what Great. photographs you have. Let's see the pictures, and John can describe what they say. Uh, so this is one of our Christmas warehouses, and uh, this is a collection of all the toys that will go out to both our Keiki and our Kapuna, and uh, several volunteers there. And uh, this is amazing to see, you know, all these toys come together. And these are all, these all come through our angel trees at the different malls and our Central Pacific Bank branches across the state. So that's, uh, that's that first picture. It's a lot of stuff. Here's uh, our Thanksgiving dinner. We've been doing this for 46 years now, actually 47 years. Um, and in that last uh, 47 years, we've served over 129,000 of our state residents through this Thanksgiving dinner at the Blaisdell, thanks to ma the mayor and city and county of Honolulu. Very nice. Uh, here we are down at Tamron Park, and this is uh, one of our uh, bell ringing days where we invited uh, different uh, uh, branches, uh, bank branches to come out and ring with us or different celebrities across our community to uh, uh, ring the Christmas uh, kettle with us. Very nice. Uh, and here's uh, two great partners. We've got uh, Aloha United Way and um, Burger King Hawaii and they've been a great support. Burger King Hawaii through a partnership with Aloha United Way and Salvation Army. Uh, they raise funds at um, their um, Burger King uh, uh, stores, and then that money goes to buy gifts for kids. And there's Cindy Adams at the left. Yep. Okay, well, shout out to both of them. Thank you, ladies. That's it. That's the photographs. That's it, yeah. So let's talk about um, your you know, remaining programs. Um, I have a, a category list here. Drug and alcohol rehabilitation. Uh, give us a precy about what you do there. Yeah, so we treat both men and women. We have three programs here on Oahu. Uh, down on Ivalay, above that thrift store, we have our uh, men's treatment program there. And many people don't realize that the thrift store operation actually supports that rehabilitation program. So there's no state or government funding that comes into that program. That is totally supported by the thrift stores ar around Oahu. It's an excellent program. And I tell you, when you go up there on a Wednesday night a chapel service to hear these guys, most of them will say, if it wasn't for the Salvation Army, I would be dead on the streets. And so these guys come right off the streets or right out of jail into our program, and we provide that addiction treatment. Then up on the poly, we have our program for both single men and single women, where we treat about 1,300 to 1,700 men and women every year through both inpatient and outpatient treatment programs. It's an, an amazing program, does an amazing job. And then down in Kaimal Key, we have our women's treatment program where only program like it in the state of Hawaii, where mom actually gets to come and either deliver baby or get baby back. So it's a, um, what we try to do is use this program to help mom to really uh, want to get the treatment that she needs. And so the, the judge will say, if you go through this program, you're going to get to keep baby. Good. And um, we find, find that this is really successful. That's a great idea. So yeah. you incorporate you know, the, the courts and what you're doing in Salvation Army. Yeah. Um, so what, what, do you, what can you hope to achieve with a drug rehabilitation program? And can you wean them away from drugs? Can we say that they're clean and they're not, not going back? I mean, what, what's the recidivism yeah. rate? So um, we actually get great results from our programs. And we follow many of our people for up to 60 days after they leave um, one of our drug and alcohol treatment programs. And we find that within that first 60 days, uh, recidivism rates is pretty low, about 15 to 20%. However, what we found and what's kind of the national statistic is that if, uh, if a person does not get that continued support and help that they need once they leave treatment, 
uh, very often they're likely to go back to their addiction because they not, they've not built that network. They've not really dealt with many so of the issues. So you need to give them a continuing support. Right. So we've started a new program a couple of years ago called Pathway of Hope. And Pathway of Hope pairs up a case manager, a life coach with a graduate of one of our programs where we help them to find housing job and a connection to a new community. We find over and over again that if you can do those three things, get them into safe, secure housing, find them a job that actually pays them a livable wage, and then connect them to new friends, uh, that the recidivism rate goes from uh, like an 80% down to about 20%. So it's almost a complete reversal if we're able to do that. I keep doing it. It's really important because if, if, they, if they fall back into it, they become a burden on everyone and a risk on everyone, yeah. and they, their lives are destroyed ultimately uh, or taken. And so yeah. uh, what you're doing there is you're, you're giving them the gift of life. And we see it over and over again. Uh, we know that if we can follow that person for up to a year to two years after they leave treatment, that they're, they're, you know, they're successful in life. And we, we have so many people that will come back and say, I've been clean and sober now for 25 years, 30 years. And it was because of those three things. I got a job, I, I got a place to stay, and I got a new network of friends. And we see that over and over again, Jay. What's the bigger risk, alcohol or drugs? Uh, well, um, certainly um, the meth uh, or, or crack is, is the number one drug of choice by about 75%. Um, that's, you know, when people identify when they come into our program, what's the primary drug of choice? It's, it's crystal meth or methamphetamine. Is that a crisis too? Uh, of course, you know, it's, it's something that, uh, what often happens is that uh, a young man or woman get in, gets introduced to either alcohol or, or marijuana at an early age, 12, 13, 14, and then a little bit later, they get introduced to crystal meth or something of that nature, heroin. Uh, some of those other things are starting to come back. Um, but it's so devastating. You know, you, what, it, what it does to them, to their lives, is just horrific. But a lot of people don't understand al al alcohol is a much more difficult addiction to break, and it can be much more damaging on the body. So a person coming out of an alcohol addiction, you know, detox is kind of that first step to really help them to deal with uh, that part of their addiction. But it can be devastating. It, it, it can actually kill people uh, trying to uh, detox off of alcohol. So you got to take them offline, put them in a facility, give them service, treatment, 24 by 7 for a while to detox them? Y yep, we bring them into it. We're the only provider of non-medical detox in the state, so the hospitals often refer their non-medical detox clients to us. And then after they detox, then we take them through our program. And there it's just a really lot of hand-holding. It's just really, hey, come on, you got to get up, let's have breakfast, let's have a meal, let's go to classes. Just trying to build routine back into their lives, uh, to build confidence back into their lives. And that takes time. And hopefully we get to that point where we can start dealing with some of the causes of their addiction. And for women that we treat, oftentimes, you know, it's dealing with an abuse that took place in their life, either physical, sexual, mental, emotional, and they're suffering from post-traumatic stress syndrome. And so we've really got to begin dealing with that at the same time we're dealing with their addiction to help them get away from Incredible. these things. Yeah. You guys are doing so, so much, and speaking of time, we only have a few minutes left, so I wanna give you the opportunity to pick you know, the programs that you'd like to talk about uh, in the remaining time we have, John. Oh gosh, um, you know, around the state we have our family service offices, and this is kind of the front line of a lot of our work. This is where somebody where they're either on the verge of being uh, evicted from their home or they're in some sort of crisis. This is where they come to us typically first. So they come to us for a bag of food or rental assistance or utility assistance or for counseling or for some sort of service. Um, th those are the programs where we really need a lot of support and help right now. That's where a lot of that kettle income goes to fund those family service offices where we can help uh, a person to deal with that crisis that's going on in their life. Um, so we often need f uh, canned food to support those family service offices. We need resources to help pay for rent or for utility assistance. Or maybe a kid going to camp. You know, many of the kids that come to us, they've never been off island maybe before. They've never been to a residential summer camp where they can just for a week be a kid. And uh, you know, you see some of these kids, they'll show up, uh, be, it'll be their first time flying from Maui or Kona or Kauai, and they won't come with a suitcase or something like that. They'll often have a plastic bag, and in that they'll have a, a sheet, a blanket, and a couple of changes of clothes, and maybe a toothbrush. <laughs> and maybe but, not. And maybe not. But, you know, those kids, they go to camp, 
and for a week they get three square meals a day. They get a safe, fun place to, to sleep. They, they, they're involved in crafts, going to the beach, going on hikes, playing in fun games together. And oftentimes those kids will say at the end of the week, can I stay here? Do I have sure, to go home? Sure, um, sure. Because, you know, they're not having to, 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 to be a, the, the parent to their younger yeah, sibling. the best time in their whole life. Yeah. And it could define their life going forward. It could change them. Well, we've seen that because kids that have come through our summer camp program have eventually come on staff to work for us at our summer camp program so and then liked it. even come on staff with us uh, somewhere across the state yeah, because yeah, yeah. their lives have been transformed by somebody taking the time to say, I care about you and I want to make a difference in your life. You know, I, you know, I haven't heard you talk about religion. And back when the Salvation Army had a certain religious uh, still do. side to it, okay, yeah. tell me about that side. Yeah. Tell me what motivates yeah. you and the others in the Salvation Army to do these good deeds and how much of it is religion. So William Booth, the founder of the Salvation Army, said, uh, you know, one of, our, one of our, our statement is heart to God, hand to man. And so uh, every one of our, we have four churches here in Oahu. We have 13 churches across the state. And that, that's really our, our main motivation, is, is love for God, and then in return, love for men. Jesus said to love the Lord our God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and then to love uh, your neighbor as yourself. And so we, we take that literally, that we're supposed to love God, and in return, love man. And so that's really at the heart of what we do. However, in saying that, Jay, we don't require anybody that comes to the Salvation Army that they sign a statement of faith, that they come to our churches. We help anybody and everybody that we can that comes to our doorstep, regardless uh, of their orientation or need or, or whatever. So it isn't to proselytize people. No, it, it's simply to do what we think is, is uh, uh, the requirement that we have from God to, to love him and to love others. Yeah, um, so it sounds like, you know, the religious aspect is you doing your good deed in your religion rather than you trying to proselytize other people to join that religion. You know, we, we think that our testimony will stand by itself, stand for itself, and, um, um, you know, we, we just go out there and do what we, we think God has called us to do. And we think that through that, some might say, tell me more about that. So we don't have to do the hard sell. We don't have to yeah. be the Bible thumpers. Yeah. We simply can say, this is what we do and why we do it. Yeah. And if you're interested, come and ask me. And yeah. uh, But every Sunday, we have church services here on Oahu at four different places. And even out on the beach in Waianae, we have a little tent that gets set up there every Sunday. And some of your beneficiaries do come. Oh, absolutely. But again, it's their choice. It's yeah. not something that they're forced to do. They, they have the prerogative to choose whether or not to come. you got uh, just 30 seconds now to talk to the people, to leave a message, whatever message you want to leave. And, yeah. and the people, I think, include the legislature and, um, you know, for that matter, the state government and the, the counties. What, what do you say to them? What message would you leave with them at Christmas in 2016? Uh, I would say support. There's camera one. I would say support not only the Salvation Army but other nonprofits that are out here working across our state. This is a really a vital time for us to raise the funds that we need to support the programs that we offer. And if we don't get those funds, then we're not able to offer those programs. And if we don't offer those programs, then we're going to see a bigger crisis. So support us, support other nonprofits, and um, it, it really does make a difference. Regrettably, we haven't had time to cover all your programs and all your metrics, but uh, where can people read up on the Salvation Army? Hawaii.SalvationArmy.org. You can find all about uh, our different locations across the state right there. Hawaii.SalvationArmy.org. Thank you, John. Thanks, Jay. Great to have you here. Thanks for having Aloha. me. Aloha. Happy Aloha. Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs>